SGC here, and today's video is totally Fan Expo Vancouver related. So if you didn't know, Fan Expo Vancouver just took place this last weekend, April 20th and 21st. It's the second year it's been done, and I have to say, I didn't really have much expectation for this con, especially the fact that in the sense of comic artists, like using the names to sell the con wasn't that big. Sure, you might say Stanley is a huge name, but really, what has he done recently that's amazing and that you should totally see him? Not so much. So hopefully maybe next year, bigger names are announced and people will realize that comics needs to be balanced out. Like Emerald City, I didn't do an Emerald City sort of debrief, but Emerald City had a great balance between comics and everything else. So maybe Fan Expo one year will have that balance. It would be interesting though, since it's three days next year, and the organizers are changed for next year. But I won't be around. Oh. So, pretty much I went there and I got three things, or four, three comics to get signed. I, re I remember when I went to Emerald, I brought a suitcase of stuff to sign. And man, that was a hassle. But t this time, three comics to sign. And that was much, much more doable. So I got my Batman 700 signed by David Finch right there and you can hardly see his signature it's like right there so let me zoom in right there and then I got Alex Maleev to sign Daredevil's End of Days and Batman 19 he did a backup on this featuring Batman and Superman pretty good stuff he does the cover for Daredevil End of Days well that's comic related and that's it for signing the other thing that I got signed reboot I got Bob, and someone was actually nice enough to point out that his signature actually looks like a squiggly line, and I must say, it totally is a squiggly line, and that's too bad. I think Bob needs a new signature, because it'll be more evident that Bob signed this rather than some, like, me. I have to say, I haven't seen Reboot for a long time, though I have seen the first episode when I first bought these DVDs, which there will be an actual first impression on it, which is kind of the interesting to watch but I really was grasping for straws to have a conversation with Bob and it was hard yeah it was hard I didn't even know that they switched his name out when he got the new suit so I was like oh okay didn't know that now I know but it was still cool I took a picture of him which is he's pretty huge actually yeah then I went to the biggest thing ever like to me to this con like it really bought the reason of me showing up was the continuum panel and clearly you can't see from this angle but this cap isn't the one I usually wear and if you notice right there what is that this is a continuum brand and look at that continuum with the O replaced by maple leaf so during the panel they were handing these ticket stubs out and I got a ticket stub for the cap and there was another ticket stub out for the postcard which was signed and by the panelists I would assume and it was funny this is a lesson for you people that want like limited stuff is to scavenge and hawk and be ravens pretty much like there is they were handing stuff out and then I was like hey how come those postcards aren't being claimed what are you gonna do with those claimed ones and then the people there were like ah, I don't know what we're gonna do I have to ask my boss so I waited till pretty much the entire hall was almost switched with the guest, I guess, and more people were coming in for the next panel, and these people were just still standing there. So obviously, people missed out and totally forgot about claiming these postcards, because they probably didn't know what it was, probably like stupid swag or something. But I s stood there and waited, like a vulture. <laughs> and pretty much, I got what I wanted. I mean, I went down to the States, like, this is the messed up thing about Continuum, is that the DVD for Season 1 is not out yet in Canada before Fan Expo and I was like crap I need to get something signed because last year apparently there was a signing for Continuum which is weird because I mean like what would they sign that was Continuum anyway so I went to the states to grab season 1 DVD and I even upgraded the blu-ray just to justify the whole trip I'm like oh will this be better quality and stuff and it was better quality because I ended up watching it on TV instead of just watching it on my computer but anyway so I was like no they're not doing any signing and yeah at least I got this postcard BAM! It's showcase for season 2. Signatures are in the back. And I can only r recognize Rachel's signature. Everyone else, not so much. 
So I guess that makes up for the entire trip of going to the States to buy one DVD. So yeah, call me crazy. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the panel. I mean, you can watch the video, the entire panel I filmed, like, you can check it out in the most recent video that I did. And totally check it out. Sorry about the shakiness, because I'm totally used to having a, like, camera that's stable, so I don't like, oh, try not to shake, but I can't help it. So that was the panel, and then I went shopping. And really, there wasn't much for me. I mean, I'm not really those crazy, crazy cool guys that have the patience and the time to ruffle through all the boxes for long boxes for trades or packages. I just like, oh, there's no six gun tab, I'm leaving. That's pretty much it. So what did I end up buying? I got J. Scott Campbell's new sketchbooks, the rough stuff, one and two. Both cost 25 bucks. If you buy it online, it's like from his store, it's uh, 40 bucks for both, but that's only when you buy both. Each is 25, so I guess I still get the same price, and I save shipping. Pretty much that's why I bought these, to save shipping. Then I got Jamie Tyndall's uh, art book. Sort of disappointed with this one, so because there was a rehash, a lot of like big pictures, and they'll shrink it down for another page, and they'll bring half of it up again. So I got it signed. Good stuff. I mean, he draws attractive ladies, but I wish there was more content for the art book. But oh well. I mean, what what can you expect when the guy charges twenty bucks for his art book and twenty bucks for his prints? Obviously, he's trying to sell prints rather than his art books. But anyway, attractive later. Then. Near the end of the con, I picked up Escapist, because, I mean, I've been seeing Steve Rolston, Ralston around recently, but I've never had a chance to talk to him to check out his stuff. But this time I did, picked this up, and found out that it was written by Brian K. Vaughn. Totally bought it, got it signed or anything, and I haven't read it, but I would totally dig it for sure. I think this is the biggest purchase for multiple things I have, would be the King City single issues. Though I'm missing issue 11, I'm waiting for that, Brandon, really, issue 11. Drop it off at RX, please. And it was for a good cause. Come it, it was for a good cause because I mean it was going towards the comic defense legal fund, which is like an awesome contribution to that fund. So yeah, still missing 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 eleven though. Oh well. Then I picked up this at Ed Bryson's table because I checked it out and I found this spread page or this section written by Ed and awesomely drawn by Riley because I mean this is hilarious this art style is totally not what he does usually so I picked it up for sure and I will totally read it and get back to you guys on it another thing I bought was my buddy Ian Woods um, this is a free sketch that he was uh, doing a lot of people were digging these because they were free and I picked up something that I should have to buy it was two dollar mini comic and it opens up and everything and it's amazing I'll post a link where you can actually see this thing happening, and it's awesome. Buy it, it's still available on his site. Only two bucks for some crazy, craziness art. And an ad for my own stuff. I'm working with Ian right now on a comic, and it will be coming out soonish. I don't know, but it'll come out. Things are done, and things are gonna be done. Also, I bought an awesome yoga print from uh, Promises, Promises J.R. Faulkner. Faulkner? Faulkner? I can't pronounce. Sorry, but um, this is an awesome, awesome print about yoga, and it's really funny. There's a link in the description to her site. It's an online comic. Check it out for sure, because it's pretty funny. The second lastly, the biggest amount purchase I got was this. A character design sketch for Phantom Half Issue by Michael Turner. Michael Turner left us 10 years ago, and I mean, I can't afford any of his original pages, because... It's just mightily expensive, and this character design sketch was so much more in my budget, and I totally had to grab it, and I guess I will have to, like, just have peace with just owning this piece of art, and that's it for Michael Turner, because I really cannot justify or even have enough money to purchase any of his original pages that have been published. So, yeah, original character design sketch for Phantom Half Issues, and that is all. Now, the biggest thing about cons for myself. Um, I haven't done a video on my craziness here, but I actually have been starting to collect a sketchbook on, like, original design characters, but cross Captain America. So, this I actually got from uh, Emerald City, Matt Kent's Mind Management Captain America clothes. Then we have Brian Hurt's Six Gun in Captain America clothes. And next we have 
Profit by Simon Roy in Captain America clothes, or shredded ones anyways. Then we have Pia Drella, Gruella from Why the Last Man, Captain America clothes. Next we have the crazy writer that really should draw. Ed Bryson's Comeback Times Cross Captain America. Next you have Cat from King City, Captain America. Now this is Star Wars Captain America. This is what Star Wars would make Captain America look like. Done by Doug Wheatley. Then we got Promises, Promises, uh, sh 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 I forgot her name, the character, but here's a yoga pose by Captain America. Marley Saccone. I can't pronounce names, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Sorry, Marley. But here's Donatello as Captain America. And lastly, Godzilla and Captain America. Also by Jason Copeland, Mecha Cap and Mecha Thor. And I also bought an original sketch of Aurora. She's just amazing by Jason Copeland also. So yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. So that is it, people. Fan Expo Vancouver has ended. And it was better than I thought it was going to be. I actually wish that I went on Sunday too so I can just chill out with people because I heard Ian, my buddy, was totally busy and I would have would have been awesome to just snap some pics for him to see how long of a lineup he had and just to see how people reacted to his art and it would have been totally cool if I could have got Johnny Christmas or Kelly to draw me some art because that would have been cool and Jimenez was apparently free totally missed out on that I probably could have got Carrie Andrews to do me something too but yeah totally missed out and I won't be here nor around for the next Fan Expo because I'll be off the continent. Anyway, that is all for Fan Expo Vancouver. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't gone this, if you didn't go this year or last year, totally check it out for next year because I think prices might be more reasonable if it's three days. Hopefully, they'll keep it at 25 or 30 bucks for a day and have it 60 bucks for all three days or something like that. But yeah, totally check it out. Support Vancouver. Just hope that things will work out better because I mean, I always hear problems about how things could be better at cons and yeah third year around maybe you'll do a lot more better anyway that's all fan expo vancouver out